Well, speaking of, of making a difference, there's a guy who's in the back of the room who will be in the front of the room momentarily, and that is Max Bolka, who made a difference for us. Uh, he has been my personal business coach for the last three and a half years. My, my wife, my whole team, which Peter Jordan, you got to meet this morning, um, it, we're just all raving fans of this guy. And he has been a tremendous coach to me, but especially what he's done is being able to coach business owners and how to start thinking through and preparing for an, an eventual transition, whether that transition is going to be this year, five years from now, or 35 years from now. It starts with the beginning with the end in mind. What's that look like? So we're grateful beneficiaries of Max Bolka. And Max, you're going to share with us about this master planning for business owners. Take it away, my friend. There you go. Thank, Thank you. you. Good morning, everybody. We're going to talk about master planning for business owners. I could have just as easily called this talk how to eventually transition from your business when you want, how you want, to whom you want, for the money you need while mitigating the over 90% intergenerational wealth transfer failure rate by creating a master plan. However, it's way too early in the morning for that. I didn't want to give you a headache, so we're just going to call it master planning, if that's okay with you. So this is really a rags to, oh. So, for those of you who are not familiar, I'm a 30-year veteran of the business. I developed a nationwide financial planning and investment firm. For the last 20 years, I've been coaching and mentoring other financial advisors like Wealth Legacy Group. I also do, along with my associates, comprehensive legacy planning for high net worth families and, of course, master planning for business owners, which we're going to talk about today. That's the slide that goes with that. This is really a rags to riches story, but it's more than that. It's a rags to riches to rags story. Typically what will happen is the first generation starts with very little, creates wealth, and enjoys tremendous success. The next generation, the second generation, will enjoy the material benefits of that family wealth, get a top flight education, enjoy all kinds of success on their own, but at some point, some doubt creeps in, some scarcity mentality, the feeling that this may not last forever. And as a result, they start to circle the wagons. The, the thinking starts to shrink, and very often you have family disruptions. This leads to the third generation where they might receive an, an inheritance, but there's no real lasting legacy. I like to say that the bucks stop here. And there's really no lasting legacy. So, there was a gentleman that wrote a book called For Love and Money, Roy Williams. And in the book, he stated that 70% of all intergenerational wealth transfers fail by the time the money reaches just the next generation. And by the time it reaches the third generation, over 90% of all wealth transfers fail. Can this really be true? This is for all intergenerational transfers. If we talk about just business owners, that figure goes up over 90%. I've seen it as high as 97% failure rate. So what does failure mean? It means, as we just mentioned, that number one, the assets are depleted. Number two, there's no real legacy. The non-financial wealth of this family disappears. By non-financial wealth, I mean there's no longer core values being passed on. There's no family traditions. There's no wisdom and life experiences being passed on. All of that disappears by the time it reaches the third generation. By the way, this is with an estate plan. Okay, this is with an estate plan. And then, of course, we talk about family disruptions in harmony. Resentment starts to creep in. We see lawsuits happening. And you see this all the time in the, uh, in the news for celebrities, but it happens just as frequently, more often than not, with business owners and non-celebrities. The families have legal battles. So it tears at the very fabric of the family relationships. This is what's happening. Why do the wealth transfers fail? Well, I outlined three reasons. Number one, there's no planning. Business owners, for the most part, are in massive denial. We think we're going to live forever, 
and we're going to work right up until the day we die. A full 40%, according to the Exit Planning Institute who did a survey, a full 40% of the business owner respondents said they have absolutely no plan to cover illness, death, or a forced exit. And as you can see up on the screen, 50% of all exits from businesses are forced exits. They're involuntary. So we have no plan for this. We're in total avoidance mode, total denial. The second reason, 93% said they have no formal plan for life after work. And we know this. You've been doing this 30, 40 years. This is your baby. You know what you're going to do the first day. You're going to play golf all day, the first day. But what happens on day two? We don't know. We have no plan for it. 93% have no plan. If you have no plan, we're going to stay in denial and not do the work to get there. We're just going to work forever. Dying at your desk is not a retirement plan. That's my biggest joke of the day. So if you're going to laugh, laugh now. Okay? The third reason, 70 to 80% of all businesses that are put on the market don't sell. They don't sell for fair market value. It's like they don't sell at all. And of those that do sell, they surveyed the owners a year later, and a full 75% of them said they profoundly regretted selling. And that's because they didn't do their homework. They didn't do the planning up front. So overall, business owners are in avoidance, and they're woefully unprepared for this stage of their life, for what we call the third stage of their life. So the solution that I and my fellow associates that you're going to hear from later today came up with is called a master plan. It allows you to leave what you want, to whom you want, when you want, with a minimum of taxes and maximum control. And much more than an estate plan or a succession plan or what we call an exit plan, a master plan is a comprehensive process for converting your business ownership into financial freedom and peace of mind. It combines the business and the personal values and goals of the business owner and prepares both you, the business owner, and your business for an eventual transition. And it addresses the financial, the business, the personal, the legal, all the tax issues. It is comprehensive in nature. This is just a pictorial representation of what I just said, and you'll notice that it's owner-centric. The, you, the owner, are in the middle, usually with your spouse, if, the, if you have a spouse involved. And then these are all the areas that we address, and we want to go ahead and focus on the value creation, the, one, the blue at the bottom. This is the first step of the master planning process. We like to call it the three legs of the stool. So the first leg is to enhance the business owner value. Very often, this is how a business owner thinks. They'll come and say, well, Max, I want to retire in five years. I need to walk away with, I think, $7 million, so I'm going to sell it for $10 million. What's the problem with that scenario? It, it may not be worth $10 million. It may not even be worth $7 million, and he pulled that figure out of his hat, or her hat. I think I need to walk away with $7 million. So the first thing we want to do is a formal business valuation of that enterprise. Find out what, a, what it would sell for today on the market to a disinterested third-party buyer. So we do that valuation. And again, when we survey the business owners, 56% of them said, yeah, I have a good idea of what my business is worth. But only 18% of them have done a formal valuation sometime in the last two years. So again, this is all just rattling around in our heads. It's one big fairy tale fantasy that we're telling ourselves. But there's no real documentation that a buyer could use for their due diligence. So what we do is we go in and we see the gap between what your business is worth today and what you say you need to walk, with, walk away with at the end of your transition. So how do we do this? There are many ways, and one of our speakers is going to talk about it later today. But let me give you a quick two examples. 
Number one is we can cut taxes. Typically, a CPA might come and say, EJ, here's what you made last year. Here's what you owe in taxes. But if you want to buy some more trucks or computers or shovels, we can deduct that and cut your taxes. And EJ says, I don't need more trucks, shovels, or computers. So CPA says, well, I guess you got to pay the taxes. That's not necessarily true. There are ways you can cut the taxes, and obviously every dollar we save you in taxes goes right to the bottom line, enhances the value of your, of your enterprise. Another way we might add value is to make the business less dependent on the business owner. Very, very often, a family-owned business is dependent on that rainmaker, on the original owner. When they walk out the door, a lot of the business walks away with them. So to the extent that we can put in the systems and the people and the processes to make it less dependent on that business owner, the more value that's going to provide for the new buyer. So this is just two areas that, just to give you some specifics of what we do in the first phase of the master plan, which is to enhance business owner value. The second step in a master plan is to sell or transfer the business with significant tax benefits. So this is what's commonly called succession planning. I, along with my team, whatever is necessary for a particular case, we'll go ahead and help you find the buyer, negotiate the deal, right, execute, and then ensure a smooth transition so that there's business continuity. In most cases, when business owners sell, they're going to take payments for a number of years. So we really don't want this thing coming back after a couple years because you are dependent on it, your spouse is dependent on it, other heirs are dependent on it, your employees are dependent on it. So we need to make sure that there's a smooth transition and there's business continuity. So this is the succession planning part of step two, but you notice it also says with significant tax benefits. So exactly what does that mean? It means we can help business owners sell or transfer their business for up to, up to 99% tax-free from the capital gains. So this is a tremendous benefit. If we add the value from seven to 10 million in the first phase, and then we can show you how to sell or transfer it in whole, in part, it could be an internal transfer, it could be an external sale, it could be to management, it could be to the ESOP, it could be any combination of these things in between. That's what makes this interesting. We would tell you ahead of time what we believe we can do, how much taxes we can save. You would know that before you execute the master plan. Okay, but now you get to keep up to 99% of, let's say, that $10 million. Okay? We do this with a common, again, one of the other speakers is going to dive a little deeper into this, but just to give you an overall impression, it's a combination of uh, legal structures and financial vehicles and tax strategies that when you blend them all together, will result in the tax savings. And this is based on laws that have been in effect since 1969, so almost 50 years now. So we've enhanced the value, we help you sell the practice, you've got the transition, right? you've got time and money, you know what to do in the third act of your life, you're living the good life, what do you do with the proceeds? Well, if you would like, we can show you a way, what if you could invest that money and only pay a management fee when it goes up in value. That is possible, and one of our speakers is going to tell you more about that today. That's why I'm very excited to be here today with all of you, because we have three other speakers that are gonna come up here, each of whom, each of us have over 30 years experience doing our portion of the master plan. So I just wanna wrap up by talking about the top five benefits of the master plan which is number one, to help integrate the best practices that we've been talking about into your daily operations in order to enhance the value. The second benefit is to build and harvest and preserve that family wealth so it doesn't disappear. Don't just leave an inheritance, leave a lasting legacy. The third benefit is it changes that survival paradigm. We help mitigate that 90% 
intergenerational failure transfer rate. And once you have a plan in place, doesn't it make your exit timing irrelevant? If you indeed live forever and work forever, more power to you. But if for some reason it doesn't work out that way, it's comforting to know you have comfort, confidence, and control from the choices that you've made of eventually transitioning out of your business when you want, how you want, to whom you want, for the money that you need. So, when in doubt, invoke the image of Ronald Reagan. I recognize that a lot of you in the room are not business owners, but you work with business owners. You're advisors to business owners. I want you to know that we work with advisors all over the country. You're the boots on the ground in the local area, in this case here in San Diego. We'd love to partner with you. So if you have any questions, comments, or especially complaints, I want you to see RJ Kelly right afterwards, and we'll set up a 30-minute Get Acquainted call where we can discuss your situation specifically and how we might best be of service to you. So thanks for your time, and I hope you enjoy.